Oh, yes, my precious. Oh, the 400 cubic inch motor is back. Dart SHP block. The cam is in the greed. Oh, it's all together in clearance. So we'll talk about that today and what's different between your typical small block Chevy factory stuff over there. That is a Gen 2 LT1, whatever. And this is your new, new Dart SHP block, which does a lot of things a little different that I think is definitely better and kind of weird. So we'll get to that today. Okay, so we'll work from the top of the motor down to from what I understand is the same and different. So let's first start right here in the valley. Okay, so one thing that I know is exactly the same as the Gen 2 motor over there is that it uses a OE roller block configuration on the lifters, which means the height on these is 300 thousandths taller than your um, typical Gen 1 small block Chevy stuff or your Gen 1 small block OE roller stuff. is that both of these are exactly the same as the newer late model blocks, which means you have to get a lifter that is 300 thousandths taller if you wanna have a link bar in here. Now, if you were to use a spider assembly that bolts right here that keeps your, you know, your standard um, hydraulic roller stuff on there, but when you're going to a solid, you have to run lifters that are 300 thousandths taller. Let me grab one real quick. All right, so down here, I have one that is not 300 thousandths taller, and I have the new set, which is 300 thousandths taller. So let's take a look. And if you notice, Look at this. Oh man, this thing catches uh, my voice. Can you hear that? Hello. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. Anyways, so look at this guy right here. This is where the link bar goes in this one. And you can see how that one is 300 thousandths taller. So you're probably asking yourself like, why is that? So let me go ahead and stick this in and that in and we'll compare. All right, so I might as well address what's different automatically. I have my flashlight here so we can look down in here. On your standard factory, 350 Gen 1 and Gen 2, they don't have these holes right here. And I, I, in the LT1, there's two holes right here, so the oil comes out this way and drains back onto the chain. So that's one thing that's different right there. So, But what's cool about this is we can look down there and we can see the lopes of the cam. And if you look right there, those guys are touching the cam. So when you run a link bar style lifter like this, it has to be 300 thousandths taller. You see this? We're hitting the cam. Let's look over here. Look in there. This is interesting. Look, it is not even on the cam. So that's not good. And you can see right here why it is hitting, I guess you would call this the deck of the lifted board. See this right here is taller. So that's why you have to run a 300 thousandths taller lifter if you're going to a link bar setup. And the same goes for a LT1 or a, I forget which year, but the OE roller blocks and the small block Chevys that had the uh, spider assembly right here, these guys, they all had tall lifted boards. So that's what's similar between this guy right here and the OE roller blocks and the Gen 2 LT1. Oh, if you're new to my channel, you don't know what this ugly monstrosity is. Let me show you. Don't want to scratch anything. Boom. I can put tools in here and then I can take my spark plugs out here and put them right there. It serves a purpose. Okay, there's one thing I want to address. One downside of the Gen 2 LT1 and the OE roller blocks Gen 1. God, that Chevrolet did a bunch of crazy stuff. And this guy right here because you can run a you know, spider assembly, it'll take, you know, the uh, OE roller block or the Gen 2 stuff, you know, hydraulic roller lifters too. And when you're running a link bar like this, these guys, like I said before, they have to go in before the heads go on. So what does that mean? So if you get a running motor, it's in your car or whatever you have, and that lifter goes bad, you gotta pull the intake 
and the heads. Now I know some guys have actually taken these lifter bores, the deck, and they machined them down so you can run a regular style, you know, OE, you know, old shit and sneak them past the heads and get them in there so if it actually fails while the motor's running, you don't have to pull the heads. So that's one thing to consider. And that's why when I got these lifters, it's that little hole right there, not sure you can see it. There's a hole right there. And they also have a little lift up right here. So what that does, it adds full time oiling to the needle bearings in this guy. You know, they had the bushing style, which is better, but those guys are about $900 for a set. And I'm not running a ton of spring pressure, so I'm gonna, you know, uh, take my chances. Now we're looking all up in the hide a hole. If you look down there, I'm not sure if you can see it. Come on, focus, get in there. Anyways, this is actually a Siamese cylinder walls, which means no coolant goes between here. But if you notice that dart when they made this, they didn't make no steam holes like the old 400 small block Chevys. No, they didn't do that. What did they do to help cooling? Let's look down here. They have a hump all out here too. See these humps? And that is this extra water to go around your cylinders to help keep this guy cool. All right, so I'm missing something up here. I'm probably missing a lot, so you guys can comment below and make fun of me. Oh, I know what I'm missing. This is actually pretty cool. I love this about the dark SHP blocks. Way better. Hopefully we can get in a hana hana hole this time. What movie is that? Hana hana hole? I'm sure some of you guys know. I'll tell you in a second. Oh, look, now we can see the Siamese board. See how they're all touching? But if you look at this, see this bolt hole where the head goes in? It is actually a material all around that, unlike a factory style block, which is just open in here. Mm. Look how beefy it is. I mean, the fact that they say these things only take 650 horsepower is this dart not trying to bastardize their high line. But you can see that, look at all that material in there compared to a factory block. And having the holes right there all webbed together to the cylinders just adds extra strength and rigidity to your setup. All of them are like that, by the way. So what it means is you don't have to worry about putting Teflon, tape, paste, or whatever in these so that you're, when you start up your motor on a typical factory style stuff that it seeps fluid everywhere. No, you do not have to worry about that at all with these, which is awesome. Okay, so when I said honey, honey hole, that's actually Scary Movie 2 where Hanson had the turkey. Lift like that and get into the little Hiney, hiney, ho. <laughs> That's nothing good. Just go on YouTube and search Hanson Scary Movie 2, and he is hilarious. That was one of the best scary movies ever. All right, back to the block. I'm sure I forgot something up here, so you guys can make fun of me in the comments below or tell me what I missed, but what I'm not going to miss is this before I turn the block over, because that wouldn't be good. All right, so let's turn her over. The motor, that is. Not here, but you know what I'm saying. Oh, come on. Failing, failing. There we go. Oh, if you guys are wondering, I am using a new mic setup. I should have put the camera a little higher. I'm using a new mic setup. And if you guys want to know some of the equipment that I use to film these videos, like that extremely wide angle, awesome limbs that I have that makes my small garage look huge, I can go over that stuff. This is a budget mic setup that I think works pretty good. So all you YouTubers who have your channels, I can go over some of the equipment I use and what I do for these videos if you want to know. All right, so now get to look all up in her guts. Look, even the ratchet is happy. It's like, swing. Okay, I'm, I'm probably getting too much in this. But one thing I'm very glad that I took this to the machine shop. Let me turn over a little bit real quick. I know you're not supposed to turn over too much when you're a new motor, I don't, I don't think it's gonna hurt it. It's got oil on there, you guys. It's gonna have to be turned over. Oops, it's kinda hard to do this with the camera. Get out, get in your home. Will you just get in your home, please? Come on, okay, here we go. As you can see, he did a lot of balancing to this. Now, one reason why he had to do a lot of balancing to this 
is because the wrist pins that he put in here, he upgraded from the ones that they gave me for my goal. The wrist pins that came with this were only rated to about, oh look at Tito. He had to put a whole bunch of weight in here to make this work with those wrist pins. Because those wrist pins were only rated to around 700 horsepower. So I want to go over that. So that's one of the reasons why he put a different wrist pin in there, which changed the balance. And he still thought that even with the factory wrist pins and what everything came together with the original pistons, that it wasn't balanced to the um, specifications that he would like this to have. Not only that, but he said the crank was actually kind of subpar. It wasn't so subpar that I would have to get it ground, but to the point that I had to use different bearings, or he had to use different bearings on the rods and the mains to get everything in spec to what my horsepower goals were. Now, I think my wife's home. Yep, she's home. All right, so I had to have a quick conversation with my wife. I told her to go inside and make me some brownies and get me a beer. She just laughed in my face. Anyways, so let's talk about one thing that's different with this Dart SHP block than your typical OE style small block Chevy. This is a priority main oiling block. So what does that mean? That means the oil goes into your mains first, then to your lifters, which I'm not sure if that, you know, if one's better than the other, they both seem to work fine. The bearings seem to be great, but Dart thought that was definitely better to put them to your mains first. So that's definitely an improvement from what I think. I don't know. I'm just saying what it is. So one thing that's different too, is you can see right here, this thing comes from Dart with splayed main caps. And honestly, that is super, super important. I know a lot of you guys say, you know, never get a two bolt block, but I'm gonna tell you right now, you definitely want a two bolt block over a four bolt main factory block. So why is that? Well, these guys right here go to the outside of the block where there's more meat. Let me uh, crank up the brightness a little more right here. So we'll look down here. So why is that important? If you look on this side, let me turn it over quick. See this guy right here? The thinnest section right here where your mains are, if it goes straight down, it goes into the thinnest section, which means you have compromised the integrity of your block. But if you send this guy to the outside, it is going to be stronger, guaranteed. So. If you get a two bolt main block, you can get splayed main caps for it. Once that hole is in a factory location, you can't fix it. But when it comes from the factory with no hole drilled right there, you can make your block a splayed main cap block and it's going to be stronger. All right, so I got one more thing to bring up. What was it? Uh oh, it's down there. Okay, this is kind of weird what um, Dart did. And I kind of see the reasoning for it because all these dart blocks are going to be a two-piece rear main seal. And this guy is a one-piece rear main seal. So on the one-piece rear main seals, the dipstick is on this side and not that side. And on the dart SHP blocks, it is on the same side as that one. But your typical two-piece rear main seal block is on that side with the dipstick. So what that does, it kind of limits your selection of oil pans. But lucky for me, they do have an oil pan that has a shallow body right here and a deep sump for the S10s. This guy. Hey, how's it going, buddy? You doing good? Yeah, I kept you clean. And on an S10, you need that clearance right there else your pan's gonna bottom out on this guy right here so that's important to note too all right there's probably a lot of things that i missed that's proprietary to the dart shp block i think i've done a pretty decent job at going over just the basics oh this guy right here i'm definitely going to have to cap that off because i am not going to run a old school mechanical block Mechanical block. <laughs> Mechanical fuel pump, that is. Uh, anyways, like I said, there's a lot of things that you gotta consider when you're putting a motor into an S10 
or when you're running a Dart SHP block. And I will try to cover all that in future videos. So if you want to see those videos, please subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. And I don't know, I'm going to go inside and make some brownies for me and my wife. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.